Are you sick of seeing peaceful people being locked away for victimless crimes? Instead of trying to get out of jury duty, consider taking it so you can do the right thing. A single juror with a conscience can send someone home to their family instead of to a jail cell. If there's no victim, how can there be a crime? And if the judge or prosecutor are keeping you in the dark, what are they trying to hide? You can vote your conscience instead of being a pawn of the state. For more information, Google jury nullification or check out the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. The Central Scrutinizer is a Soviet-style leviathan trying to keep track of all you do. That's why I use a VPN or virtual private network from Bola VPN. Bola VPN is inexpensive, secure, and will allow you to use your computer without leaving a trail. Bola VPN is now also offering torrent seed boxes for safely sharing media with the world. And if you open a support ticket saying you heard about them from the Freedom Fiends, they'll add three extra days free. That's Bola VPN at B-O-L-E-H-V-P-N.net. Oh, well, it's a good thing that the Constitution only applies in certain circumstances, in certain instances, oh. and not in certain jurisdictions. Yeah, you that know. doesn't apply. That doesn't apply. The whole uh, 14th Amendment thing, I guess, is kind of a fluid, sort of flexible. It's more of a guideline, really. It's not a rule. It's more of a guideline. We are just some modern-day abolitionists looking to rid the world of the last vestige of slavery. Statism. It's the Seeds of Liberty podcast with Andre, Dave, and Jeremy. Everybody and welcome to the 153rd episode of the Seeds of Liberty podcast. As always, we are covered by a BIPCOT no government license. This allows reuse by government. Uh, yeah, Jesus, I'm all right tonight. <laughs> this this allows reuse by anyone except governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. Wow. That means you, the possible United Koreas of... Korea. Korea. There, there's no, there's no unification coming. We, we'll get to that in a second. I was just gonna, man. And in all the times I've read the Bibcot license, it's not since the beginning, since the very beginning, when I, when I was still trying to do mimic Michael's uh, B, you know, spelling it out with the uh, the stupid military alphabet or whatever it's called. Um, oh yeah. It, it's not since those days have I screwed up a Bibcot li- introduction like that. Man, I'm ashamed. <laughs> so ashamed. You're, st- you're still reading it? Yeah. No, I'm not reading it. That's the thing. I haven't had uh, to. Like I just, it, I just blanked there. Anyway, nah. <laughs> oh man, It'll happen. it's it's that it's that early onset onset on Alzheimer's that I kept talking about recently. Uh-oh. It's coming, man. Anyway, what's up, everybody? We're back. This is uh, Jeremy, and uh, we have got what we are currently d- dubbing a full packet of seeds here tonight. Once again, as the entire all f- <laughs> all four co-hosts are now here tonight again, because uh, I am joined by Dave, Andre, and Shane. What's up, guys? How are you? No, I'm Hello. doing fan fucking tastic. How are you? <laughs> wow, wow, wow! I'm doing, uh, not that well, but I'm doing. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing. Shane, Shane, <laughs> I'm doing great. Actually, maybe not. Actually, I am doing fan fucking tastic as well. Also, there awesome. you go. All right, well, two, seize the fucking day, gentlemen. <laughs> two, two, Hallelujah. Two, two, two fan fucking fantastics and two not quite as good as that, but still not horrible. Well. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm I'm always probably worse off than everybody else, at least currently. But uh, yeah, that's good. We're we're in good shape. Anyway, so yeah, we're, what's up? We're back. I've been um, cutting my pillow out, so I'm just sore as all heck, man. Gah. Cut it like like not Why using the hell a pillow. Are you you mean pillow out? You're talking about not using a pillow. I'm trying to be clear on this, Dave. 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 Dave's not here, man. We lost Dave. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm afraid I'm afraid I can't do that, Dave. <laughs> Dave said something about cutting his pillow out, and then he just disappeared. All right. Anyway, fiend phone. Oh, there fiend he is. Phone. Give it up to fiend phone. Hi, Dave. Give it up to fiend phone. The crash right after Hell I saw. Yeah. yeah. So, Hell so yeah. You, uh, you, you say you're cutting out your pillow. You mean you're not using a pillow anymore? Is that what you were saying? I'm. Tr- I'm. Yeah. I'm trying to trying to go pillowless. I'm trying to cut out my pillow. Believe it or not, like here's the test. Right. Here's the test to find out if you need to do this. Okay. Tonight, when you get in bed. If you if you sleep on a pillow, lay down, get like you're about ready to go to bed, stiffen your neck up and all of your shoulders and everything, and pull that pillow out from under your head, and then 
throw the pillow, you know, to the side and just hold your neck and everything there. All right. That's how your muscles are healing through the night under all of that stress, but it's getting mitigated by the pillow. So your neck and your body and everything's healing incorrectly. And I think that that's causing a great deal of my shoulder pain. So I'm, I've slowly tried to completely that, eliminate that is, my pillow. That, that is quite possible. I don't know if you necessarily have to get rid of your pillow, though. They do have pillows. Well, designed- I'm down to like a, 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 I have, a, I have like a, a quilt that I folded a couple of times. It's real thin and it's actually worked really well. Well, they, they do actually have pillows designed to help stuff like that, Dave. You know, like the what, what is that? The my pillow they sell. I actually have a knockoff one of those that has actually worked pretty oh, pretty well for me. That's uh, all you got to do is call one 800 mypillowcom Exactly. exactly. Thank you. <laughs> I, I've heard nothing but good things. Call about Mike that. Lindell. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, All right, Jesse. That's good, Dave. No, that's Mike. That's Mike Lindell. Mike is uh he sounds he does sound surprisingly like Jesse Ventura. But they're he, both from the same, I believe, same county even in uh Minnes- Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. In Minnesota. Okay, so, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> Funny story about Mike Lindell or yeah, Mike is that his name, Mike Lindell, or is it Chuck Lindell? I can't remember. My, anyways, <laughs> you think Chuck, Chuck dealer, Liddell? I mean, come on now. We're getting good. Now we're no, getting, no. We're Mike Lindell is my pin, my pillow. He he was doing so much crack. He was spending so much crack money on crack because you know he just had all this money. Was he hanging out? Did he ever pillow. hang out with what was the mayor of uh, Toronto? What the heck was his name? No, Rob, uh, Robert Ford. Rob wow, Ford. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh, his dealers cut him off. They they like interventioned and put him through like rehab. They're like, dude, you're ruining your life. <laughs> so like like okay like when. You're I'm sorry. Crack I, dealer cut oh, you off. Yeah, I was gonna, but yeah, okay, but yeah, you holy may, crap, you're you doing may, a lot of crack. Well, yeah, okay. On the one hand, you may have a problem, but on the other hand, my thoughts immediately went to I thought I had a really cool pharmacist, um, and I still think I do. But man, like that's going above and beyond, like cut, like you know, cutting sales, off, cutting sales off from yourself to help somebody. I'm out. sorry, that's, but that's a, there's that, no that, one in this world more greedy than a crack dealer. I'm sorry. I Everyone know knows what crack that. does Poli- to people. Politicians Everyone are, knows uh, what crack does to people. Politicians are so when greedy. you when you get a crack dealer that cuts their funds off like that from a millionaire, holy crap! You know what I'm saying? That's a problem. Yeah, well, no, I know. I'm saying, yeah, he he definitely must have had a problem. But those are also some pretty it's damn good dealers, man. It's like, those are, uh, that may be hokum, but like, uh, it sounds so plausible. All right, well, so it, it doesn't sound plausible for the reasons you described. <laughs> if true, though, you yeah, know, like I said, it they're 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 who would make that story up? <laughs> Okay, there, okay. I don't even. We, we we could go on forever on that because just look that's, how many stories my, get made, get, get made up about everything. That was when I read it. I was like, "How does someone pull this one out of their ass?" Like, I don't know. That's like squirrel riding jet skis, kind of crazy, huh? Well, well uh, it's the same way the uh, rumor got spread around that Mister Rogers is actually a sniper in Vietnam and he'd like killed tons of people. I have like, never heard that rumor, show. but that is spectacular. That's funny. Really? You've never heard that? No. God. No, I don't they think used I've ever like, heard that they used, to be, uh, they used to be scuttlebutt around the, the playground when I was in elementary school, and Mr. Rogers is actually a Vietnam sniper, right? And like, I guess he always wore, long, you know, he always wore uh, sweaters that and sweater vests and long sleeves. No, of course not. He never served. Okay. I, I guess that I guess that started after my time because back in my school days in the early '80s, Mister Rogers was still just Mister Rogers, you know, like somebody most of us. Why do you mean you're cracking me off of my crack? <laughs> like I just. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> just, uh, it's mind blowing. <laughs> oh man! Anyways, you are, you are our first topic so, on the docket. So when are we go? When are we ever going to get you a pop filter, Dave? You, you, you of all of us, definitely. I've need got. A, a, I've you, got a backup. Is you, that it? You need a full blown pop filter, not just a windscreen. My like, bad. You, you need it because you pop way too much. Anyway, um, well, yeah, you're not popping. You know. Well, well, like I said, um, you, you know, your your great impression of him aside, uh, things like the my pillow were designed to, to for exactly this reason that normal pillows. Um, even if they are decent, they, they like, you know, they get missed, get, uh, all, uh, messed up and, uh, deformed within like a couple of uses to the point where they are no longer serving you a purpose other than just being there, but they are always misaligning things because of the way you lay on them. So that's why they design these things. I mean, I guess going with none, I don't know. I'm, pr- I mean, I'm, I'm going to be doing something like that soon. Although I was planning on bringing the, one the of next step is going to be eliminating my bed and moving to, uh, like some kind of floor bed. Uh, I'll explain it if you want, but I, I mean, 
I <laughs> floor bed. Okay, well, I don't know. Again, I, I've I've heard I've heard people doing stuff like that. I and I'm somebody who has slept on willingly slept on floors before. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I'm going to be sleeping out of my well, it's not car. Soon. I'm not going to be sleeping directly on the floor or anything. It's it's oh it's, neither it's am I. I'm going to build be, up a couple of layers. But I'm going to be the main thing bag. is is you want to set up that something that doesn't have any give, so your body is just straight, so you don't have uh, a sag. In yeah, your body when you're sleeping. Yeah, kind of like the uh, the the back of a uh, Honda Element, which is where I'm going to be sleeping coming soon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, rock and roll. Because my uh, nomadism. My yeah, my uh, my my uh, my upcoming uh, temporary taking the hard defense. Okay, my, my temporary yet <laughs> yet uh, indefinite homelessness is apparently going to be starting soon. Um, actually, by the time this episode comes out, it may actually be out. I don't remember the timeline with everything because we're, we're still one episode ahead. Uh, but by the time this comes out, it may be close to me being out because allegedly there was a closing date set on my house. And uh, of course, uh, I've been waiting for that this entire time and going nuts because I've been, you know, I ran out of money a while ago and I, I had to stick my hand out and ask for some help uh, because, uh, you know, things had gotten so bad with all the delays and, and all the, you know, and the banks hassling, hassling me every day because I'm behind on, you know, obviously I, cause I was told I was instructed by my real estate attorney not to pay the mortgage anymore because we were under contract and everything is going to be wrapped up shortly. So it's like, yeah, don't bother. You'll be fine. And now months have gone by and I haven't paid the mortgage and I can't afford to pay the mortgage, you know, all this stuff. And uh, so now it's finally happening. But I'm told like I'm told again at the very last minute on a Friday when not much can be done as far as getting all the other things I need to get done, you know, uh, before I get out of here. And I'm also told I have when I was given the information, I had 13 days. I was told, so <laughs> I was like, the what's, the, what's the deal with the court situation? Are you free to leave New York? Oh, no, that's well, I, I'm free at any time to leave New York right now. I just have to come back for my court dates. Um, but that's the other part. That's the other problem with this is that or the other part of this is that, well, it's good. It's, it's going to be somewhat of a problem. But uh, the the closing date that the, the buyers now want is the 24th of May, which again, I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to figure out in my head when this one will actually come out. I think it'll, this will come out just before this. Um, so yeah, it should be this Thursday. If you folks are listening, uh, when this first comes out, um, <laughs> was the closing date because it's right before Memorial day weekend, because they want to move in and have plenty of time to, you know, get set up and get all their stuff yeah. moved in. Um, which means I'll have to be start my homelessness campaign uh, during the holiday weekend. And if I, I do, you should live stream like four or five hours a day. I still haven't and run figured donations out donations the I whole still, time. No, no, because and go pr- go go buy a loudspeaker if you can. Well, no, just go like start getting on corners and just. Oh. No, no, ragging no, people. Dave, That'd be when, so funny. No, okay. I, I, I don't need to get myself find in any, every protest you can go to. I don't just, need to get man. myself in any more trouble right now, unfortunately. So I do have to keep somewhat of a low profile. Um, and, uh, and, and as far as money goes, that is the one good thing that yes, the, the sale of the house means I will finally be getting some money coming my way. That's been like, you know, supposedly been waiting for me all this time <laughs> once the sale is completed, unfortunately, yeah. because of the, the bullshit with the town of Hempstead here and holding me up this entire, like they're, they're the ones who have held this up the entire time. And the uh, they, they've been holding up the permit process by telling my contractor, the contractor I hired to, to handle the permits, telling him one story and then telling my real estate attorney a completely different story and then basically giving us the runaround for about a month and a half to the point where now it's like, you know, crunch time. We're really, we're really trying to get this deal closed. And as far as I know, oh I, man, they're trying to mess with you. Well, yeah, but as far as I know, the deal is the, the the house is being closed on without the permits being done, but this, with the stipulation that I am still responsible for those, which means the money that's been being held in the escrow account uh, remains there until this until the town finally gets around to finishing off these permits. And I have no idea how long that's going to take. And unfortunately, like I said, it's great. Yeah, the house is going to be sold. I'm going to have that money. But once I pay off my real estate attorney, Dude. Uh, my real estate agent, my, my real estate attorney, 
Um, I have to pay the I have to pay my trial uh, for my criminal case. I have to pay my trial uh, lawyer because uh, uh, I was you know originally I was going to have to I thought I was going to ask for donations, but since the sale is going to happen before we actually get to trial, um, I'm, I have to pay him. Um, I have to pay off all the credit I racked up and pay off my car as planned. And now with the money I was supposed to have left over that was supposed to set my family in up and I up for at least hopefully six to eight months as a backup, just in case it took uh, Jen that uh, longer than that to find the work that she was looking for. Um, mm -hmm. That money is going to be cut more than cut in half because it's going to be held in this account that again, I'm not allowed to touch because I'm at the, I'm at the, at the uh, whim of the, uh, the town you of need Hempstead. to go down to the city hall and get a, a bullhorn and say, give me my money. Give me my money. It's just, it's so, it's so insane. It's like, your money. Use it when you need it. Yeah. I, this is ridiculous. Not. I paid, I paid every one of my property taxes promptly. This is ridiculous. Well, yeah. I've never <laughs> even, I've never even had to hurt, deal with that because my property taxes have been rolled into my mortgage the entire time I've been here. I know. So, so like you could make the claim. So yeah, exactly. Like, I've, I've literally never gave you any problems. Yep. Like you stop. It's a, yeah, it, it is, and it just it, it's, and as soon as you call a couple of news agencies to come down well, there, see that's and, the other problem. The news agencies and I already have a bad have a bad rapport around here, so that's not exactly going to work. You um, call anonymously. So anyway, um, that's the uh, so yeah, that's that's what I'm dealing with right now. So I am going to start, and and you know, like I said, I don't, I still, I number one, I still haven't figured out the live streaming thing. Number two, um, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be trying to hit other people up for donations at Just this point. Just got to download Periscope, buddy. But anyway, because I, because the even though even though half the money is going to be held up, technically I'm going to have, I'm going to have access to some money, so I will be okay for the time being. Um, it's just going to take, you know, a little longer for me to actually get out of here because then the, the next part of course is the court thing, which my next court date is the day after Memorial day, which means I will be like in my living out of my car for about four, five days before my next court date. And, you know, of course, unfortunately I, uh, my original plan was if this was, if this happened, if I was out of the house for a court date, uh, you know, I was going to stay, you know, living out of the car camping if I can and have to. Um, and then, you know, a night before a court appearance, I figured I would, that would be the one time I would spring for like a cheap motel or something. But of course the night before the court appearance falls on a holiday. And even though it's the end of the holiday weekend, you know, all these places still charge holiday rates. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, of course, and I have the dog with me. That's the other thing I have murder dog. So it becomes an issue Ugh. because she can't, unfortunately she can't stay with Jen and the girls because their apartment is upstairs. And I really don't want her doing stairs as much as, you know, I could try to have her avoid doing stairs as much as possible these days because she is pushing 11 and uh, her legs are getting a little bit weaker to the point where, like we've noticed where like she used to like, she would sit on the tile floor to get petted. And if she would sit there long enough, her legs would start sliding out from underneath her because <laughs> she just doesn't have the power to grip anymore. <laughs> So uh, yeah, yeah, and, and having to have her go up these uh, wind. So you're you gonna know. have to deal with that. Dang. Yeah, so it's kind of a hassle. So again, like you know, I put a video out today, you know, which was titled uh, "Every Every uh, so Every Dark Every Silver Cloud Has a Dark Lining" because you know that's just the way things go for me. <laughs> Even when I get good news, it's still like, oh yeah, but yeah, it's, it's good, but it's good news with a caveat. Yeah, or five. Um, but you know, whatever. Um, I, I have, even though it's, it's kind of nerve wracking, I have been looking forward to the whole living out of my car thing as crazy as that may sound. And, uh, I was talking to, uh, uh, uh former, well, actually mul multiple time guests, uh, our, our, our friend Jason Booth, uh, earlier today about this. And cause he's, co he co hosts the, uh, Vanu podcast with Shane Radliff, who we've also had on the show before. And, I was talking about doing something with them to because, uh, you know, they promote this, the idea of this van nomadism thing where people actually like set themselves up to go live out of like, you know, a bigger van that they convert into like essentially a tiny home or something like that. And uh, I'm, do I'm taking it from the perspective of like completely going out on the fly and just trying to figure things out as you go <laughs> living out of your vehicle and trying to get away with whatever I can without, you know, all the, all these different things of trying to get away with uh, saving money. And uh, I, I figured because I will have the little bit of the safety net 
uh, once the sale, you know, like I said, once the sale is completed, he, once I'm allowed access to part of the money that's supposed to be mine, <laughs> I'll have a safety net. So I figure I can try, I can get away with trying some stuff out and seeing how it works out. And uh, that's my plan overall. But as far as the court thing, I don't really know what's going to happen. Like I have to wait till this hearing, like th- all this, all the next appearance is, is the, is the judge's decision on the objection that my, my lawyer raised regarding the the knife because the the idiot DAs who have messed around with this thing so many times forgot to document it properly and uh I, I think you know so so trying to uh attack every possible angle my my uh, lawyer picked up on that and raised an objection so that's basically all this is and then hopefully there'll be some decision about a trial or something but who knows <laughs> and uh you know realistically I'm looking at probably a month or a month or a month at the minimum, I think, of uh, living out of the car. So it's going to be fun. <laughs> Sounds exciting, man. Sounds like something I'm glad I don't have to do. Yeah, stay strapped. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I'm still going to be here in New York. So, you know, of course, that's not allowed. Um, and I, I, of course, would never carry uh, any. Uh, any illegal weapons with me, you know, uh, even, even when I was arrested, I was carrying a quote unquote legal weapon on me. Um, I would never do anything like that. And, uh, never, never, of course, never. So, but you know, like I said, I, I'll have murder dog with me and, uh, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll be fine. I'm not too worried about that. It's just, a, you know, like I said, it's, 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 it's an adventure and it's something I'm looking forward to on, on a lot of levels. It just sucks that I'm going to be separated from the kids and Jen even more, uh, you know, even more so than I am now, because as it is, they're already at the apartment. So like I only see them during the day and between having to get them home and get them settled before they actually are ready to go to bed and getting them up and out of the house in the morning, you know, I only spend part of the day with them anyway and it'll be even less if i'm living out of a vehicle and not knowing where i'm starting my day from every night or every you know every morning necessarily on on a day-by-day basis um and of course having to wait all this other crap out um but you know whatever I'm i'm trying to stay positive uh you know best like i said best case scenario is uh is is we get through this stupid uh decision and the trial is set and i'm you know it's 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 a short trial like it's supposed to be <laughs> and uh, i'm acquitted and it's taken care of before the middle of june um but then i also have this whole, whole issue of i still haven't got around to getting out to the midwest to go scouting for places yet so now because of the timeline of everything that's happened i have to wait until after the stuff with court gets settled out before i can actually take that trip <laughs> nah dude just wing it wing it it's all good i just i literally don't have the time and and no i'm not gonna wing it yeah i uh <laughs> i i i like I, I as i've said before i've only ever driven through the state of indiana twice uh and uh it was a very short part <laughs> just like the very the very northeast corner <laughs> I was like in and out of the state of like what it takes to drive across Delaware, which is like, you know, a few minutes, like 10 minutes or something. Um, so yeah, I, I probably should go look first. Um, anyway, that's uh, enough about me. So what's your plans after the oh. court date oh. as far as, <laughs> I guess, we're, as I guess far as like, me. if they're like, no, no, no. Like what's your plans as far as like, like, le- like directly leaving New York? Are you going well, that's the thing. to see anybody? Well, like, no, as that's as far the, as a trip or anything. Well, no, no. I, again, uh, if, if the court stuff gets settled out, I mean, one way or another, uh, uh, unfortunately, I mean, as I've said many times before, all the evidence is, is, is essentially in my favor in, in a just, in an actual just system, you know, because the only evidence that's been provided on their part so far is the knife, which has been essentially mishandled as, as far as the documentation goes. So that may actually, again, in a just system, the judge would go, yeah, this needs to be suppressed because you guys fuck, you guys screw this up. You don't get to do this, um, which takes away a huge thing. And the other piece of evidence is the, uh, is the edit, clearly edited news clip of the events of what happened that day. So the, uh, if the, if the actual, unedited you know raw video ever actually makes it into the courtroom as my lawyer will obviously request you know or subpoena or however that stupid thing i don't remember how that stupid thing works andre would obviously know better than us better than me because he's the lawyer guy um 
But yeah, <laughs> he uh, what should we call it? Uh, if that ever makes it out, it'll clearly show that I re- repeatedly said, get the fuck off my property, get the fuck off my property, get the fuck off my property before she said, I just want to comment. And I said, here's my comment, get the fuck off my property. And then went back to what I was doing uh, with the knife in hand. Um, so they'll clearly have nothing. So in a just system, this should be a slam dunk. This should be, you know, an acquittal, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> But of course, that's not how it works. It's a joke. And I could the like the the jury could very easily be biased against me um because I was very hated for a very uh, for for a while here. Um I've I've been forgotten largely, I think, but uh you know, once this co- once this comes back up around, uh, once the trial actually happens, I wouldn't be surprised if I start making the news again. Uh and uh, you know anything could happen at that point. So and of and, you know and then of course that's the that that starts getting into right away for right away from the po- best possible case scenario happening because then like if that stuff starts happening, then I have to worry about trying to like get get the trial moved if necessary, you know, and that'll take more time. So who the hell knows, man? I, I don't know when this is going to end, but if and when it ends, if I actually if 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 justice actually prevails and I am acquitted. <laughs> Uh, as soon as that's over, I'm setting up my trip to head out to, to Indiana and scout out and, you know, hopefully find a place for us when it, within a week or within a couple of weeks. Uh, and if not, I have to come back for a little while and hang out with my kids and Jen and then, uh, and then go try again. So I don't actually know how long, um, it's going to be. And if the worst case happens and I get found guilty and I get slapped with probation, which as I've talked about before, I found out was the misdemeanor probation, which means I'm stuck here until the probation's over <laughs> because misdemeanor trans, uh, probation is not transferable. Whereas felony probation is because the system is oh so just, um, then, <laughs> then I don't go anywhere. And then I have to retool everything and figure out how to sp- stay, as cheaply as I can, you know, while I'm stuck here, um, you know, because I don't even want to, I don't want to rent another place even because I'm, you know, that money that I said I had earmarked that I'm only going to be allowed access to part of. That's not just for me to play around with. That was supposed to be for me and my family to start our new life. And if I have to blow even more of that, you know, that's going to be like, that that'll just be the uh, you know the knife being stuck in wait you know, beyond beyond deep beyond too many times because uh, I've already been uh, you know hit up enough for money from these idiots um, and punished enough uh, for all this bullshit and because because everything all all the, all the all the charges I'm incurring all the debt that I'm in is directly related to them screwing me over and dragging this stuff out forever because if they hadn't dragged it out this stuff would have been taken care of and heck even if I had gotten probation it might be almost over at this point. And I'd still be talking about just getting out of here now, which would be great. But so, uh, yeah. Well, it, it's it's unfortunate when government officials do things to spite people, you know, especially when you take in consideration the nature of their job, the nature of the state and its unjust existence currently. Uh, it, it, most people don't understand the complex layers that are at play here and why this is just indicative of if they can take this one little thing right here and spin it into making you somewhat uh making you somewhat financially unstable because of it then they can do it to anybody and that and that's something you might want to just go knock on all of your neighbors doors and tell them hey by the way the the mayor is allowing this to happen I'm leaving this city. I don't care what happens, but we don't even just have, want to let we, you know. We, we don't even have a mayor, unfortunately, I don't think. If if we no. if we do anymore, it's just a figurehead. There there isn't anybody that gets voted for in the town that I live in because uh it, it don't work that way around here. There's like there's a whole bunch of towns that are under one one larger town or township or whatever, and that's the Local. It don't work that way around here, y'all. That's that's the local ruling body, and then you have the county government on top of that. I'm currently dealing with the both. I'm be- dealing with both levels because I'm dealing with the local government, the the town government, in regards to the bullshit with my house, and I'm dealing with the county government on the level of the on the criminal stuff. So it's just it's and I'm getting screwed. Yes, by uh, on both ends, and I, but of course it'd be almost impossible to prove. So it's not like I could do anything about it, but 
Uh, and, and as was also pointed out earlier to me by J- by Jason Booth was, you know, the, the the insanity of this whole thing, especially on the legal end, is even if I do get found guilty and they you know slap me with some probation and a fine or whatever, they will no in no way, shape, or form get anywhere near uh, a return on the money that was spent. <laughs> to drag me no, through this and the process payers are paying for that bullshit exactly um but of course like as far as telling my neighbors all this stuff before i leave like most of my neighbors don't like me anyway because of the, the whole thing that went down um so i don't really talk to too many of them and unfortunately i'm pretty sure if i even said that to the ones that would still talk to me it would just you know it would fall on deaf ears because they they don't get it even even the ones well, that were well, willing to- no here's well he, you can you you can use that to your advantage right you can be like look i know you guys don't like me totally understand that look at how much money the city and state just wasted on dragging this out as long as they could when they could have just slammed it into the ground right from the get-go and here's what happened yep yeah. So I mean, there's there is there are a few things better than being able to incite somebody's anger and then redirect it in another direction. It's like anger anger can be extremely productive if you can redirect it, and I think this is like, you know, this is the perfect setup to redirect anger that's being placed at you towards the state. Yeah, may, maybe I'll you know, like I said, I, I I'll, I'll probably engage a couple of them because there are a couple people that I still speak to that I'll say goodbye to and stuff uh, on the way out the door. But yeah, it's 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 it, it but it, it it is it's it's so blatant at this point. I mean, even to the fact that I was thinking about it earlier that on top of the now what I think it's thirteen appearances I've had. I think I think I was up to it's either twelve or thirteen, uh, not counting the arraignment. So there's been. 12 appearances of me going to court where all the, you know, and uh, a couple of times I was there for hours. So like all the, 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 the man hours that get charged for everybody in the courtroom for that stuff, you know, and for the judge and the, yep. the district attorney and uh, the bailiffs and the, and the court guards and the stenographer and all the crap. Um, and then uh, during the pretrial hearing, uh, the first, I think it was the first go around, uh, which, you know, again, that was only supposed to be a one day thing, <laughs> you know, a couple hours in and out. It ended up taking two days. Um, because the DA is so incompetent and the G- the judge just holds her fucking hand through the entire process. Um, I overheard the, the cops that were, uh, they were coming in to testify for their, their, whatever they were, you know, for the pre for the pretrial hearing stuff. And I overheard them sitting outside the courtroom discussing the fact that they were all getting paid overtime to be there. And the cop- oh, yeah, and cops, cops are paid overtime to, to appear in court for, uh, yep as witnesses so yeah. yeah so all of those resources wasted on what even the people that like just absolutely don't like you would be galled by how much money time and effort was spent on this particular enterprise yeah it's it's com- it's completely insane and you would you you would hope that's the case uh that pe- that even, even those people would uh, would realize the the severity of this cuz yeah it's 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 absolutely ridiculous just what they've got done through this and even even if you try to uh plug in the the fact that the the town of Hempstead dragging out the sale of my house has netted them at least a little more money cuz I'm still getting they're still getting property taxes from me essentially because there's still even though I haven't paid their whole thing's still rolling over and I, you know I'm getting charged for this cuz it's technically still my house um and they'll get paid once the uh, once everything gets paid off so they're still collecting their money from me on that end but even if you plug that into the equation it still doesn't come anywhere close <laughs> Oh yeah, it's to a what, huge deficit. To what they've huge shelled, deficit. yeah, huge deficit. To what they've shelled out to uh, just drag me, dra- drag me, drag this on in hopes that I cave in to their uh, their demands. Um, and you know, there 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 is a decent chance that even even the, in the bad scenario where I where I lose, the punishment could actually be less severe than the deal they were trying to offer me. <laughs> Um, so then all they would collect is the fine money and, uh, whatever money I'm charged for uh, probation. Cause, uh, you know, that's how the wonderful system works too. Although that's the, that's the, what the, what the one thing that's really bugging me is the fact that I, I also, on top of everything else, uh, apparently in, in order for my, in order for me to get the notes, uh, from the, from the last quarter parents, uh, the, from the pretrial hearing for my lawyer, so he can use them, you know, to, uh, prepare our case and everything. 
uh, for a trial. Uh, I have to pay. <laughs> I think it's one hundred and sixty dollars because it's something ridiculous like five dollars a page and there's like thirty two pages from the pretrial hearing of stenographer notes. And I, I, I have no idea how they justify this. I, I'm supposed to sit down with my lawyer on Monday and have a conversation. I don't think they can. I don't. Apparent. I don't know. But apparently, there's no way. Uh, there's no other way for us to access this. And uh, you know, I. It's just like this is the way it works here in New York. No, that's that's a straight up violation of due process. Pretrial hearings are open to both parties. Like both parties have to be aware of what's going on. Any kind of motions that are filed. Um, that's a violation of due process, like straight up. That's that's I a violation so of due process. I'm definitely going to ask my lawyer some more questions before I actually hand any money over to him. Uh, I mean, I, I definitely would. I could be wrong because I'm just a law student. I don't actually know anything. No, I know. But, and uh, That I, strikes me as a grave miscarriage of justice. <laughs> well, that was my first thought, An too. An egregious one. But but again, unfortunately, as I've said many times before, there's there's plenty of other people, yourself included, uh, that are either in or get, getting into, have been in or were in the legal profession that I know across the country in different states and different jurisdictions, and they've all been scratching their heads through this entire process going, how, how do they get away with this? I, I don't understand. E- even even as screwed up as the system is here, you, that doesn't it doesn't work like that here. I don't get it. How does like and and all I keep hearing is yeah, that's not how it works in New York. Um, I've heard that from I've heard I've heard that from my lawyers, other lawyers from New York. It's like yeah, that that's just not how it works here. <laughs> oh well, it's a good thing that the Constitution only applies in certain circumstances, in certain instances, oh. and not in certain jurisdictions. Yeah, you that know. doesn't apply. That doesn't apply. The whole uh, 14th Amendment thing, I guess, is kind of a fluid sort of flexible. It's more of a guideline, really. It's not a rule. It's more of a guideline. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, just like the way they enforce the law. It's more of, you know, just a rule, not a guideline or a guideline, not a rule. Well, yeah, but I mean, and really, it could be it could be something as simple as nobody's bothered to challenge it, and nobody wants well, to put that's, their you that's, know, neck out on the line to challenge it, and that's usually what it boils down to. Yeah, that's, that's why it, these things kind of go unquestioned for as long as they do. Yeah, and I, I would lean more. I, I would lean very heavily on that being the case without having investigated it any further at this point. Um, <laughs> that exactly that because that's how I know. I know having dealt with other aspects of the of the of the just us system around here. That that's exactly what they do. They uh, just push, you know, just like just like any good bureaucrat or politician. They uh, they push and push and push and just see what they can get away with. And if they get away with stuff, they just go, oh, okay. And they just keep doing it because nobody questioned it. And, uh, you know, it, it could be cemented in as, uh, well, this is just the way things are. Um, or, or, you know, we've always been at war with East Asia uh, very, well, quick, mean, and, very and quickly. Not only, and not only that, but, I mean, you gotta fa- you got to factor in, like, who's going to take the time and effort to file in district court suit against the you know the municipality as an extension of the state of New York over this issue, which is likely going to cost more than the hundred and sixty dollars it costs you to get your pre you know pretrial notes from the from the uh, yeah the county clerk's office exactly like it's it, it just unless you have some sort of vested interest and you have the money to do it, there's no reason to do it. You're just better off paying it because it's going to be cheaper that way anyway. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, uh, Which really pisses me off. <laughs> I wish I had like uh, all the funds that I needed to like bring stuff like this to court because I would love to. Well, you know what? Sadly, maybe, that's maybe that's see, that's actually a good. That's actually a, 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 not a, 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 a well, it's a, a, I have a good idea coming out of that rather. I should say that, uh, you know, maybe that's a maybe that's a project we should uh, try to take on, you know, kind of like uh, how something like the Innocent Innocence Project got up and running. Uh, where you know they uh, they collect donations and get funds to help people out who uh, have been wrongly imprisoned, um, and and usually get people off with uh, DNA. You know they 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 spring for the legal phase for DNA evidence to finally be submitted to have these people exonerated and stuff like that. Um, a wonderful project. We actually run an ad for Daryl W. Perry, who is uh, running for Team Innocence uh, in the New York City Marathon this year. Uh, I guess that's November, I think. Um, yeah. And a great project I've also talked about. I want to donate to them as part of my uh, giving back once me, my family and I are finally out of here and on our feet <laughs> uh, for all the support that we received during uh, this entire that would be, process. That actually, that would be something. But yeah, uh, that, w- that would be a, a pretty cool ongoing project to, to kind of push. Yeah. Like maybe uh, that could be my, my great contribution to uh, 
legal society. Well, yeah, because like I said, you, you have an organization like T, you know the Innocence Project. You have organizations like FIJA and uh, you know any or any organizations that's actually trying to deal with the legal system as it is currently, you know, and even, even though a lot of people who are involved in these organizations definitely don't want the legal system we have currently, they would much prefer a system as, you know, maybe like we would prefer. Um, but having to de- work with what you, you got, like, you know, maybe that's, maybe that's a good, uh, pro- uh, a good project you could set up. And, uh, you know, I, I don't think, I don't think there's anything out there dealing with specifically with that right now, you know, jump on that stuff, man. <laughs> Fair enough. And, Fair uh, enough. Yeah, you could probably get a, you could probably get a lot of donations sent your way for a project like that. I I would think people uh, if we set if you set it up right, I'm sure I could you know and I know a lot of people who already deal with and and uh, donate. Some dude to- got fifty thousand dollars for mac and cheese. Uh, yeah, I know. Well, I'm not. Yeah, but it's usually, unfortunately, stuff like this usually doesn't get uh, the attention of mainstream investors. <laughs> but the good stuff never does, Jeremy. Well, of course. <laughs> Um, just the stuff that could be used somehow to manipulate the, uh, population. Anyway. Oh, okay. I'm going to take my tinfoil hat back off. (laughs) But yeah, I like that idea, man. You should uh, definitely run with that. Because, uh, yeah, it's not, I mean, like I said, it's, it's definitely screwed up here in New York, but it's, it's not much better in any any of the other, in any of the other jurisdictions around the country, as far as I know. Um, People get railroaded all the time, largely because not enough people fight back. Uh, I mean, there are as much as I don't, uh, you know, I usually shy. Away, well, I shy away from, and I used to dissuade, uh, try to dissuade people from uh, like any type of political a- activism whatsoever. But there are actually people I know of. Um, not enough, obviously, and I, I wish I could afford, like you were talking about, uh, afford to be one of the people who who was out there doing that stuff and providing that help for other people. But there are people I know who ch- who do stuff like that. They challenge these um, inane like rules, regulations, laws, whatever, um, and uh, on the on the behalf of everybody in the county, <laughs> even though they've you know they they haven't talked to anybody about it, they just get it in their craw that they need to do this. And uh, I've come across it. I've I've seen stories like this all the like uh, all across the country uh, where there's yeah. Certain- didn't we didn't we discuss the uh, the guy who started uh, citizens for citizens for constitutional governance or whatever and got like seventy or eighty percent of all of his city statutes taken off the books because they weren't constitutional. Uh, I think didn't so. we talk about that probably. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it just that's you know, impressive. Go- just because the state has a monopoly doesn't mean it can't be interacted with in positive manners. It just, yeah. and I think more people should team up and, and get a little concerned and have monthly meetings about like, Hey, let's go talk about this, these 10 laws uh, that are on the city's books, because this is ridiculous. And we need to go to the city council meeting next week and go, Hey, these all need to get removed. They're unconstitutional. We're about to go get a lawyer. And we've got well, ten yeah, of and, us here, and and, he and when it's and ten or fifteen of you, they can't like the cops can't come like, you know, harass you out of town. Well, of course they can, but I mean, here's here's the the broader point. The broader the broader point that but. the broader point that needs to be made um, is, or at least this is my opinion because I used to have this line of reasoning um, where you know every all levels of state officials are all part of the same state in like the most abstract and broad way yes i mean it's all technically the state right but you do have competing state interests at different levels which is why you you know you sue the state government the individual state governments in federal court because the federal court acts as the arbiter between you and the state even though they're both technically the state and the federal government does control over the states you do have various layers and levels that you can appeal to from wherever you're at so I, I think that's that's a point that sometimes gets, you know, lost in translation, and we sometimes get ahead, you know, kind of pass it off to the wayside. Like, oh, okay, yeah, there's you know divisions between different levels of the state, but it's all the state and yada yada whatever. But uh, I do think it it does bear bear repeating that uh, there are different levels of the state, and you can use one against the other in trying to. I mean, achieve are, are as ten much of you going to be able can. to go down and shut down the governor and his plans? Probably not. Probably well, that not, depends. But- that depends because if you if you file suit in federal court and you win, that weighs heavily in your favor. Yeah, 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 yeah. What what I'm saying is is 
You, that was the point I was getting the at. Stuff I, the stuff I'm advocating for is just like literally going down and holding these people to their own words. You know, regardless of your beliefs in the state, uh, you can go read a book and go, hey, even you're not playing Monopoly correctly. Like, well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like when you when you try and take on, you know, a local municipality, you can appeal to state courts. If you're trying to take on the state, you can appeal to federal courts. And there's different competing layers of the state, which I actually think yep. is one of the one of the 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 uh, most brilliant moves that the uh, Constitutional Convention created was a, a competing sovereignty system. An actually like an actual fleshed out competing sovereignty system wherein you can pit the state against the federal government with you act, you know, choosing one or the other as your like as your proxy. Right. And I, I do think it, it bears it, it. You need to bear in mind that anytime you, you want to take those kinds of measures, you can actually appeal to other levels of the state against the level of the state that you're currently combating. Yes, I know you're using the state. It's terrible. It's status. It's horrible. Well, no, but it's, there's, again, you know, I said that before. I mean, I, I, I don't, I used to try to dissuade people from stuff like that, but you know, I, it's, I mean, I'm in the position and I, you know, I don't have a, ch I may not have a choice, but to do certain things like that. And yeah, depending on your situation, uh, it, it may become necessary and I, I think it just it, it usually just comes down to the. I think uh, we're all in agreement that we're talking about defensive actions toward with, with the state and defensive you know plays with the state, not not trying to get anyone taxed or shut down using the state power. Because I think we all all agree morally and ethically that that's immoral. Well, I'd love to. I'd love right, to say all can. of us, but yeah, let's let's hear from Shane about that because we haven't heard from Shane. We, we, again, we, we invite Shane on the show and, and say, "Hey, Shane, do you want to be a co-host?" And then when when you guys when we all show up together, we never let Shane talk. So uh, <laughs> your floor is yours for a little while. Talk, my Shane. Friend. Talk. Okay, so yeah, uh, this sounds like you know the classic change it from the inside, which in a lot of ways can work at the local level defensively. Uh, I've heard Dave say before, attack at all angles, and I used to try to change it from the inside and. Uh, that particular angle was not that effective for me, but I won't discourage people from taking that route because there are some small victories that are made at the local level with, say, you know, legalization here and there. And uh, I like what Andre was saying about using different levels of the state to go against, you know, other layers of the state. Uh, sometimes we do have to do that <laughs> pragmatically because of the situation that we're in. Uh, ideally, yeah, there would be no state. So while we have A to deal with the state, can't stand. <laughs> correct. <laughs> but while we have a state, we have to deal with it. Sometimes we have to use part one part of the state against another. So yeah, I do believe that we should attack at all angles and uh, not discourage people from taking that route. Yeah, I mean, I, I know people who uh, r right before uh, when when I was still actually part of the Libertarian Party, and I think actually when I was when, when uh, my buddy Nolan and I were actually running for. Uh, local office around here, we had hooked up with a, a group of people that we had met. I, I'm pretty sure it was like at the Oath Keepers meeting or something, but it was a group of like seniors who were mostly constitutional conservative types, but quite a number of them were extremely conspiracy minded and they were all about going down like the sovereign citizen route and stuff like that. Mm, and uh, yeah. like they actually like got organized and they had like I think over like more than ten of them that actually went through with this. Like there are ten, twelve, maybe even fifteen of them that that tried to go down and and basically do what you were talking about about like basically threatening the uh, the local government by saying we're you know this is what we're this is what we're saying. I think they were after the uh, oh Jesus I'm going to forget the the name of it now, but there was uh, so, some kind of special grand jury that. Allegedly, if you follow any of the uh, sovereigns, well, I shouldn't say any of uh, some of the some of the different sovereign citizen routes because there's a whole bunch of different pathways. All these different people talk about and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, all those of which guys are don't all of which are complete and utter nonsense. By the yes. way, this is a, a caveat for can everybody break, who's listening who's not aware. They're absolute nonsense. Can, yes, but there's can, there's, can I? Uh, well, hold on. I was just gonna say there's. there's can I explain real quick in in the no, simplest Dave, antidote no, ever no, what an no. what this is? 
What? You know, it, a sovereign citizen it's is an oxymoron. like an atheist Christian. It's, a, it's, a, it's the simplest. Yeah, it's, a, it's an oxymoron. It's the simplest uh, explanation for it. There's no God, but I believe in Jesus. Literally, that's what a sovereign citizen is saying when they say I'm a sovereign citizen. Yes. Like you, they don't. Well, I don't. Most of well, a lot. Uh, granted, a lot of people who engage in practices that are that are tied to that don't, don't actually reject that term because they understand the contradiction there. Um, but the, the whole idea that you know using the government on that level, but based on the fact that the the government is only screwed up because the one thing that ties mo almost all of those groups together, you know, like I said, they all have a bunch of different uh, thing. A lot of them have different pathways they go down, but there's usually a couple connecting factors, and almost all of them share the same idea that everything was fine until Lincoln screwed things up. And then the United States became incorporated after that in what is it? 1871 was the incorporation date, I guess. Yes. Um, uh, and that, then the military war powers act has never been stopped, but they, they under, but that, that's, that, that's their, that all of almost all of them come back to that where before every, if we go back before that, everything was fine. <laughs> Which I I have a lot to quibble. No, with no, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, because exactly. I'm like I'm like. Are you what forgetting was before that before it led to what's now? So if it's going to do that, it's going to do it again. So we've got to find a new system. Well, exactly. So, um, but yeah, they 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 definitely uh, a lot of them. You know, like I said, I I, I knew I they're they're misguided, but I I knew this group and they actually tried to Being do this. Being the f the guy I am, the first time I heard sovereign citizen, I was like, I'm not even looking into this because. <laughs> E, like just you know because every word when i read a word i'm go, I, I break it apart in my mind every part of it uh and, and go to the root word of every part of it and just sovereign's just it, it, god so exactly. such, such every, a contradiction every, every word it's such a contradiction like a word like well, yeah. yo yo mannery per chance <laughs> <laughs> oh yeomanry oh, oh. yeomanry yo yeoman yo yeoman 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 yeah. yeoman are we are we are we are we actually talking about yeomanry right now okay before we go there i just want to say sovereign citizen <laughs> is like uh, the reason it's an oxymoron is because it's like saying i'm an independent subject of the state it's contradictory so yeah continue <laughs> See, the whole yeoman well it's thing. even worse than that shane oh. a sovereign is a king and a citizen is a subject of a king. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> okay, so it's even more ironic than that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's yeah. <laughs> and as far as the whole yeoman thing, I, I think of the word yeoman as meaning something completely different than the word that Dave introduced us to today, uh, which we were trying. We were trying to er, earlier today. We were having a discussion. We were trying to figure out what a, like a group of like you know like a gaggle of geese or a, a pack of dogs like what a group of farmers was called. And the best we could come yeah. up with was Dave. Farmers, came, suspect, Dave came up but... with the word with the word. Apparently, I don't know. Like like I said, yeoman. I think it was, that's a that's a na isn't that a naval term. Uh, or a, and at least uh, a, a sea no, term. No, no, it's no, no. a Middle English. Yeah, it, it's a, it in, it denoted, if I recall correctly, um, it was like a a, a term of 15, profession. 15. It, it was a term of profession, if I remember correctly, that denoted a certain level of experience. Okay, so like, yeah, okay. The definition we got was a group of men or no, a group of gentlemen who own a private land and farm on it. Yeah, so that's why and I was I thinking said, it was well, something different. The, so like, the, I our podcast is our essentially our right. private land, and we are planting seeds, and farmers plant seeds. So we're essentially a digital. We are. We are, <laughs> we, we are digital yeomanry. We we are <laughs> figure figurative view yeomanry. I don't know. Digital, although digital sounds yes. better. It's a yes. metaphor. Crypto, crypto, Meta yeoman, <laughs> crypto, crypto. There you go. Crypto, <laughs> crypto yeomanry. Crypto yeomanry. <laughs> Oh, there's no oh, T. <laughs> you keep trying to stick a T. Yeah, in yeah, there. yeah, yeah. My bad. <laughs> Although I, I accidentally stuck a T in there, in there because early. I'm English. Yeah. Is this Yeoman? Uh, M A N or M E E N? No, it's Y E O M A N R Y. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, Yo, Yo, uh, Yo, I can't, Yo I can't remember how the Y is pronounced in in Old English, but I don't think we're doing that correct either. Well, like uh, I said, I went with Yao. I don't know. It might be Amen. It might either Amen. be silent or a J. Okay, so this is different than a profession. Yeah, exactly. That's what. That's why. Yeah, I was, yeah. No, no. no. The, yeah. the word that we're referring to is different than the the way that that I uh, think it's yeoman was people, but a bunch of group of men that buy a bunch of land and just go. You know what? We're gonna go farm over here. Don't mess with us. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, but it, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's I don't, what I took it as. Yeah, but we were we were, we were talking about that earlier, and I think you. Uh, 
I think she, I think you missed that conversation, Shane. We were we were discussing the fact that we we could actually we we could actually all turn into we we could form a, a yeomanry because Dave already has a plot of land that he's farming. And, uh, you know, we discussed the fact that that's my goal. I want to go get, you know, even though I'm trying to get rid of the land I currently have here. At some point, I was planning on getting land somewhere else and uh, starting to farm. And uh, Andre also mentioned that at some point down the road, he would also like to do the same type of thing. And I said, well, if we can get Shane on board, um, then Hmm. we could have uh, we could actually have we could all become feudal lords. (laughs) Yes. Well. Damn it, Andre! Thanks for taking my thunder, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're just welcome. tyrannical feudal lord. As a, as a feudal, as a feudal lord, feudal as, a, as a future yep. feudal lord, I appreciate that you allowed me to assert myself over your. I was your so not. I was, I'm kidding. I was so not going that direction. You bastard, <laughs> evil! Just destroy my, destroy my good intentions. The evil, best evil way evil I bastard. could f- phrase it would be a libertarian. <laughs> Geometry. Sorry, I'm done. Uh, no, like it's I said, such a I, weird. I, I think I, I like it. I mean, it's going to be the show title for this crypto yeomanry. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, and, that to, goes uh, down and to specify in the, what uh, spe- to and specify what uh, yeoman uh, a yeoman actually is. Um, in the sense that I was, it was a servant of, right? in a royal or noble household, and in the in terms of the military. It was a ranking between a sergeant and a groom, okay. or so it wasn't a naval. squire and a page. So it wasn't naval, but it was military. Okay, so I did have that part kind of yes. right. Yes, but, that's but right. yeah, the other the other one. It yeah. also refers to a man holding and cultivating a small landed estate, a freeholder. Um, that's probably in- that's probably the closest definition <laughs> to the one we to the one Dave found earlier. I don't know. Let's see here. Mir- Wait, no, hold on, hold, hold on a second. Dex- hold on a second. I got Miriam's hold, right here. All right, but Dave, hold on a second. Ra- that last one that you read, uh, Andre, what was that again? So a, a yeoman is also a man holding and cultivating a small landed estate. So a yeoman farmer that is would be what we're the talking opposite about. of a serf. Okay, right, but that's where a yeah. surf farms the land, so then own it. A yeoman actually owns the land. Well, I think you, I think you just, I think you just solved it for us then, because that is essentially, I, that's essentially the definition that Dave stumbled across. So I guess the de- correct pronunciation is yeomanry for that. So there we go, we've solved it. All right, excellent. I've actually <laughs> looked up ye- yeomanry, and it's in Miriam's dex- dictionary. It's got two different d- uh, definitions here. It's got uh, the body of yeoman specifically the body of small landed proprietors of the middle class so, right, so the first one is essentially granting you private land that you can farm on the, the first definition is um, partially useless because anytime you def, you define a word by re- repeating the word crap, it's, yeah. it's not a definite like it's, it's circular so shut yeah. up anyways yes the, the body of a small landed proprietors of the middle class and then uh, number two a british volunteer cavalry force created from yeoman from 1761 so essentially conscripts into farmers. the which which fits into the definition that andre was described so that, okay we've, they're volunteer right. so all right, i mean we, that I, falls in line too with our, our ideology man we might need to resurrect the yeoman tree tr- class the trade <laughs> there we go i uh, would love yeah. to be a volunteer cavalry Right. I mean, I'm already a cavalry scout, so Let's, like uh, I, I've got I've got it halfway in the bag. I just need to learn how to ride a horse. Who who who, who still feels like playing on Facebook and uh, starting the web page Radical Yeomanry? Um, it's going to be the <laughs> thing. I can't. I can't. I, can. I got to stay away. Otherwise, I'm going to waste too much of my time on there. No, and, uh, and you, <laughs> you need to make the page being Yo Mantis. <laughs> oh man. Uh. All right. <laughs> Enough, and on that, anyway, uh, enough with the enough with our. Anyways, for the Trump's day. trying to get all of North Korea's nukes to quote unquote rebuild Korea, North Korea. My question to you two or three people in the uh, listening audience right now that I have currently listening: uh, How in the hell is a country that's twenty trillion dollars in debt going to rebuild a country? You know what? Let's let Shane answer first. Well, hold on. Before, Go ahead, Shane. Well, hold on. Before before we do, let's not bury. <laughs> let's don't don't bury the lead too much. Uh, you want to start off with that? Explain what Dave's actually talking about a little bit, Shane. Uh, can you do? The, you you want to start there? Because you just got to put together like a half like a fragmented sentence or two. That okay, really so this is one about. of those fragmented, ham-fisted segues. Yes. Uh, and I'm, he throws to me, and I'm expected to catch and run with it where? We got to keep our listeners on the All toes. All right, never mind. Man, I'll, because I'll, otherwise, I'll, I'll go to sleep. I'll start off that. Just to, 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 <laughs> Apparently, Dave, Dave was... This is what the thing Dave wanted to talk about before we started the show. And apparently... 
good old Trump begins um, is saying that uh, that part of because there there has been talk that now uh, Kim Jong Un is apparently willing to discuss uh, removal of you know part of the their, their nuclear arsenal, I guess. And uh, say nuclear one more fucking time. <laughs> fucking say it. Nuclear. Fuck, I dare you. I just did. You son of a bitch. <laughs> I do it just to bug you, Andre. Nuclear. Anyway. You <laughs> son of a bitch. All right, go on. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> Strategery. Um, the, uh, yeah, so apparently now Dave is, Dave has brought us the, the fact that the Trump's uh, allegedly claiming that there will be a, a rebuilding effort in, in, in North Korea if, if this actually happens and, you know, so Trump can claim victory, uh, over the whole, uh, you know, peace agreement between North and South Korea and the denuclearization mm-hmm. if that actually comes to that. Uh, and it's a good question, though. How 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 is the is any country or any org any company organization whatever that's that far in debt? Even even one that's twenty billion dollars in debt, maybe even twenty million dollars in debt. How does anyone do <laughs> much less twenty trillion dollars? And and that's of course yeah. That's just what the you know the the U.S. claims as the as the as the U.S. debt. Um, that's not taking into account unfunded liabilities on all those things, which usually run any the estimates run anywhere between. An additional eighty to two hundred and fifty trillion. The last time I looked into that, although those numbers are from late two thousand and sixteen, early two thousand and seventeen, um, so I'm not actually sure what they're at at this point. Uh, <laughs> but all that's there too. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you how, Jeremy. I'll tell you how. And you touched on it earlier. You convert those nuclear missiles, and you use those materials, those nuclear materials, into building nuclear reactors which will provide limitless <laughs> free energy clean energy because nuclear energy is a some crap. fictional nonsense that you came up because you can't pronounce the word correctly i can pronounce it correctly like i said i just do it can you of me. can you i don't believe it okay i'm sorry i'm going off on a tangent i'm going to stop i guess you'll never know <laughs> anyways i'll i'll, I'll question, believe though. it when i see it guys i just don't know why i don't know why north korea would give away their nukes okay well we, first we, of we all, discussed it before the show they're kind of in a, a up against the wall scenario. well yeah I, mean, I was saying i was they're, saying they're half their military starving to death yeah i was saying i listen to a lot of i listen to a lot of foreign po- policy stuff <gasps> these days i i listen to scott horton regularly like all of his shows mm-hmm uh, there's another, I think I may have talked about this show before. It's one uh, Merrick uh, Van Landingham turned me on to called Foreign, Foreign Policy Focus that's uh, run by, I think it's like this younger kid, uh, you know, maybe in his 20s, early 20s or something, who just started doing this stuff. And he's actually gotten, I, I guess he's kind of befriended Scott Horton and a lot of other people because uh, he's being, uh, they, they, they help him out by posting him on the Libertarian Institute and all this stuff, but he does a really good show and he does like a pretty concise, like 20 to 40 minute show every, uh, every couple of days and covers a lot of stuff with uh, what's actually going on in the foreign policy and you know between those two between those shows and then I just happened to be it was Rogan I was listening to earlier he had this guy um, oh, what the heck was his name? I don't know. Mike Baker, maybe um, former CIA guy that apparently Rogan's had on before. Um, and I, I, I started out not liking the guy because he start, he right away. He was, he, he got into the fact that he's essentially a, a really big war hawk against Iran and uh, ba- running on what I believe to be completely retread and repeatedly debunked claims about the alleged uh, Iranian nuclear, uh, nuclear, 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 nuclear. <laughs> program. <laughs> there is no second you in that word, sir. Nuclear. What second you? Nuclear. Nuclear. I said yeah, nuclear. nuclear. I said nuclear. You go. Just nuclear. go nuke. Nuclear. No, it's nuclear. Um, anyway, I still, I still, I'm still on the nukes or a hoax train. Oh Jesus! Oh man! I totally oh, forgot. So we're that not. You do, no, we're us. not doing that. We're not. We're not. We do not. Shane, have weren't you actually on the show with us when, we, when he did this the last time? <laughs> this was this was after one of the shows. Oh yeah, that's right. The whole that's right. Uh, that's in a Patreon episode somewhere. Where now the truth really comes out. <laughs> that's right. I forgot Dave and his whole. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just trolling. Nukes are a hoax, man. Look, how can the world be round if you look at the horizon? It's flat, okay. 
I don't, so I mean, don't go that far. I mean, well, your logic is undeniable. How do you I know? know? Yeah, I mean, if you can Bro, see just it, look it, it up on the internet, true. okay? Just Google. Just Google search. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the idea, though, that all these people are going to be freed from this totalitarian regime, though, does sound awesome. Um, it would be nice if, if it happened. Somewhat, even if it's somewhat, you know, like quasi- like I like, let's just say they're at a two or a one on the, I don't know, economic freedom, whatever freedom scale. <laughs> Instead of like a negative, let's just say well, even, they even if they, they approach the level of freedom that you, they have in China, which is not very much, and after they started implementing this like social, um, social cryptocurrency thing that they got, the social status currency thing that they're trying to put into place, that they're they're starting to roll out across the entire country. I mean, even if North Korea achieves that level of non-freedom, it would still be a massive improvement over where they are now. Oh, yeah, of like, course. It would be night and day. I, night and day, you know? Yeah. And that's, well, yeah, these people wouldn't... I don't know if they would... I don't. I just don't know. Under, the culture shock would be insanity. It, it's it, Yeah, it, it's definitely going to be... That's what I'm saying. That's It's going to be civil war. Well, I, I, I don't know, man. They well, really no, believe well, in the leader over there. Well, yeah, because it's been beaten into them and it literally <laughs> in a lot of cases, you know, and the the whole idea of civil war, I, I don't really see that as, as a legitimate concern only because, you know, again, you, you just look across the, the globe and what happens. And in the in a lot of the places where conditions are, are horrible, the reason there aren't civil wars there like they do break out in certain places but where they where they often where they could happen in plenty of other places they don't because the people are so beaten down at that point and so you know they're on the brink of starvation or at starvation levels they don't have the energy to fight back and uh they'll just be so thrilled with the with the changes that get implemented and the you know the, the anything to make it uh, any better as like as andre was saying anything to make it an improvement is is, is going to be you know that's that's a much bigger deal for the people. A lot of people like that. Yeah, and I think they could spin it into a propaganda victory where they they try and paint the uh, paint the narrative where like you know when North Korea was formed, you know it was difficult, trying times, and like a stern father, there had to be strict rules, and you know as sometimes oh. happens, a father has to be harsh with his children. But as the children grow and mature, and they gain a sense of of self as adults, you know then the father comes to an understanding with his children and his children are allowed to flourish and that's the period we're in now Now, do not question anything that happened before that was just the natural course of events we're comparing it to family and everybody has family and knows what that's about i mean i i've i can that's just off the top of my head i'm sure that with you know a little bit of time and effort they can really craft a a solid narrative that will just flood the the minds of the people yeah, I mean, hell, China, China's been doing this for yeah. like decades. No problem. Oh, I mean, and I bet you're going to have CIA over there helping him construct this at well, as well. So, that, yeah. Yeah. Well, even, even without <laughs> I didn't even think about it. Even without that, it's yeah, it's 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 not, it's not that hard, especially again with a with a population that has been beaten down and oppressed for that long that they just. And then even and even the people that are beaten down who would otherwise, you know, just absolutely just th- throw off the shackles and run away as fast as they possibly could. They would buy into that. Because it's so ingrained into their psyche that it doesn't even occur to them to think a different way. They just want they just they want something better. Like exactly. they, they need relief. So they'll they'll swallow that hook, line, and sinker as long as things get better because it conforms to what they're experiencing, right? Ab- absolutely. Like they experience the harsh times and now they're experiencing the slightly better times and it fits with the narrative that they're being sold, which they were beaten, you know, within an inch of their life over. So they're like, Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. I will never question this. Things are good. Things are good. <laughs> the leader is right. We've, sure, we've always, I hundred percent understand it. We've always been at war with, with Eurasia. Uh, oh, of course, <laughs> um, we've always yeah. been at war with the globalist. 
Yeah, and uh, well, that's what that's what the I, fluoride filters. Well, this yeah, this this ties into what I was starting to say before about the you know all the foreign policy stuff I listened to, and and earlier today I happened to be listening to a Rogan podcast with the CIA guy, and like I said, other than his hawkishness against uh, Iran, which I was kind of irritated with, um, when it got to North Korea, he was saying things that seemed to line up with a lot of other stuff that I've heard about North Korea. So I was like, all right, he seems to be better on this issue, um, but a lot of the things that he was mentioned is like you know uh, you know whether whether it's Trump trying to like take uh, take credit for this whole uh you know peace deal that's going on as uh, you know as i mentioned i think before the show my favorite meme is right currently is the one with the cartoon of uh of kim jong-un and the guy i forget his name again something moon fan kai moon thank you from from south korea uh with the peace treaty in their hands saying we made this and then trump taking it from him and saying oh you guys with a question saying oh you made this and then there's one more panel with trump holding it by himself going i made this um Thank you for that. Um, and then he, so you know, and then there's other people. Even even Moon, uh, Moon allegedly uh, said that Trump, you know, deserves the peace, the Nobel Peace Prize for this or whatever. Um, and I think it's BS because uh, what I've heard from a lot of different sources, and it seems to be, it seems to be more likely, is just the fact that you know somebody like Kim Jong Un, he's not stupid, he's not crazy, uh, as a lot as he be as he's been portrayed. Um, and uh, you know he's looking at the lay of the land, and there has been reason re- in the. In, I, I don't remember how recently. I, one of them is very recent. I I, don't, I can't remember how far back the second was, but fairly recently there's uh, there's been uh, two um, attempted escapes from from uh, from North Korea that have been highly publicized, and it's been military members. And uh, because of the fact that now this is like, it's not just the fact that like some people had, had heard and, and kind of heard about the fact that like, you know, the population is starving, but uh, even the military is extremely malnourished because like both of these guys who got, uh, who ended up getting caught, uh, but it ended up being like recorded, uh, videoed somehow and I got out there on the internets. They, uh, you know, it was found out like these, these guys were like highly uh, malnourished. They had a whole bunch of parasites in them and stuff. And like, uh, you know, they're on the, 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 uh, the even, even the uh, military is on the brink of starvation. Wow. So it's just Western decadent capitalist propaganda. Yeah. None of that's true. Yeah, of course. It's all stage. Actually, that's, like the it's moon getting landing. So, it's getting so bad that even Venezuela is sending aid. <laughs> wow. How can they send aid? They can't even print money. I'm kidding. Well, you know, socialist people. Oh, stick I, I don't have right. to print so money. This they is have the a timeline crypt- we live in. Something like that could be could be true. They don't have. You they, never know. They, they don't have to print money. They got to starve out to the they? end, bud. <laughs> no, they they actually can't afford to print money because they don't print their own money. Like most uh, most uh, national currencies, they source it out to a company that specializes in printing and producing. You know, counterfeit. Uh, like hard to counterfeit bills, right? So like the Federal Reserve doesn't actually, the Federal Reserve or the U.S. Treasury don't actually print, physically print the bills. They source that out to another company that specializes in actually producing the, the pieces of paper that you use, right? And Venezuela was doing the same thing, but their credit is so shot that they can't even have that company print bills and promise to pay them at a later date because that company's like, no, you're not going to pay us. We all know you're not. <laughs> So you're cut off. We can't we can't print you any more bills. You can't afford your own money. That's beautiful. Isn't that's, it though? Isn't that's it? socialism. Well, they got their own. Uh, Venezuela has their own cryptocurrency now, so they're all good. Oh Jesus Christ! Well, that's what I'm saying. Uh, that's what I was trying to say before. Don't they? Ha- I thought they had. Is that are they still trying to pull that off? Uh, what did they? Did yeah, they, did the they call it the petro? Crypto. Was it? Yeah, it was called yeah, the, the petro. Petro or the petrol, something like that. Yeah, petro. Yeah, the thing. petro. Well, yeah. Well, of course. I mean, talking about Venezuela, yeah, the petro dollar is about to collapse. Well, isn't that isn't that like the one of the like the most horrible ironies about? Of, I mean, of all the the, the destroyed socialist nations um, of like Venezuela in particular, don't they have like one of the largest uh, oil, oil resources? resources in the world? Yeah. Yes, they yeah. do have one of yeah. the largest oil reserves. Uh, and what most people don't know is 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 United States has already they've already com- became completely oil the. De- uh, undependent from everyone outside of Canada and they have contracts with Canada until like 2060 I believe for almost all of their oil and all of their oil reserves plus they have all of their military and all of Canada so Canada's under martial law as well uh, from the United States uh, so most people don't know these things take that uh, you hoosers 
<laughs> and they don't understand that, that well i mean all of the united states is that if you have a military base under you you're under martial law so um uh, most people don't get not that true that's that's oh, yeah. not true that is that is patently false <laughs> that dude is, that is that um, is patently false okay Maybe, maybe even even may, okay. even on even on a military post, there is not martial law. Martial law means very, some, a, something very specific. Maybe, maybe they just try to t- t- trying to massage that word, that phrase, like he massages so many words and phrases. But say, but but in, in his defense, maybe I'll say, uh, hoping at least he's talking about in practice, if not necessarily in uh, in theory or writing. <laughs> no, I mean yeah. what I'm saying earlier. We have. Uh, uh, the uh, incorporation of the United States and the enactment of the uh, the War Powers Act in 1871, they've never been rescinded, and the corporation is still what's uh, governing the, these United States of America. I think we've and that's not a conspiracy. This. That's literally the fact. I think we've discussed this off air before, and I think we ended up looking it up that day and, and discovered that it actually the incorpor- was. Yeah, the Incorporation Act you're referring to incorporates the area of Washington, D.C., as, exactly, as city, which is its own sovereign city. state, its as own well. sovereign country. Actually, Rome, yes, in the same way the states are sovereign. Are the, in the same, no, in the same way the states are yes. sovereign. They are not independently sovereign of the United States as a federal government. Well, no, they. It's just another state. It's another territory that behaves. No, no. What I'm saying is, this is a city a nation. Its own city nation state governed by a completely it's, different. <sighs> Which Play is, is which is of course Dave, the sovereign citizen theory that we were discussing earlier. It is, not. and we we all okay, not, we all agreed we debunked. That. We all agreed we debunked, and now Dave is circling back and going. And now I'm not just, sure if we <laughs> agree. It is oh, not no, that the incorporation creates a a defunct state on the same level as the other United States plural under the constitutional system. Okay. These, these so United treat States Washington D.C., the, the municipality States. of Washington D.C., as its own state, as a state within the United States. There's nothing. Yeah, it's also insidious its own or sinister. As well. About, well, yeah. Every city, like, there's plenty of corporations that control cities, man. That, that, that means <laughs> Do you think literally that nothing. Corporation? Illuminati. That literally means Rothschilds. nothing. Rothschilds. That, I know, but that means nothing. Go. That means nothing. Soros, well, it's like saying, man. Oh well, the the mayor down the mayor downtown <laughs> is you know funded by so and so. Like okay, cool. I, it, th- there's no conclusion to be drawn from there. I'm sorry. I know. I know. It seems like there's more there. There's not. I've read inferences. The act several inferences times. equal evidence, man. <laughs> if there's nothing there. There is no. There is there's no additional no there. thing there. It means there is no, no there. there, there. Zero. It, <laughs> we'll see. Well, it depends on what your definition of the word "there" is. Uh. It depends on the on the definition of the word "is." Is there's. <laughs> I, I no 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 no. I am Sounds all like about. Sounds like you have reading. solid argument. I'm all about reading into legal texts. Believe me, I am because you can. There's so much you can piece out of there, and so many conclusions you can draw that may not have been intended by the people who drafted the laws, but are nonetheless applicable in the court of law. This is not one of those cases. This is not one of those cases. I'm sorry. I wish it was because it would allow a lot of other things to fall into place. But there's, it's not there. It just is not there. Well, no, the Constitution has never been respected. So, like, of course it is. It's all a farce. What the holy? (laughs) Like, does not relate to the point that was being discussed. Uh yeah, it has everything to do no, with it. No, it does different. It, does, why, it does why does not, different. There's no evil corporation that owns the United no, 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 States no, no, of hold America on. federal government. Take five seconds here. The scene from Billy the, Madison is the what? The state that existed before. Guess what it is? The I every time I talk, I get cut off. But the uh, the state that existed before the Civil War, a wholly different state was exact. Uh, was use. It, it, it usurped what was going on at the union and was completely funded and done by a different uh, situation. The greenback yeah, was completely I'm, funded that, by someone else. Same thing with the Confederate dollar was completely backed by the same people that backed the greenback. Okay. It was a, a play to get both sides in debt. Like, right. So I, hard I understand. Explain. I understand what you're getting at. I, I do understand what you're getting at. And I totally buy in that the United States government is bought and paid for. However, that has nothing to do with the Incorporation Act of 1871. All the Incorporation Act of 1871 did 
was create for the purposes of legal jurisdictions the state of Washington DC. That's it. It made no other alterations whatsoever. It it ha- it held. You you, you might no be right, other- right, but the um, the, uh, <laughs> the 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 follow through is is that the no, 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 city of right, right. But I'm still right. I, I am right. I, I'm telling you, I am okay. correct in this. Uh, see, it's I, I will have to see the actual you know hard stuff. I mean, we can't do it live right here. Wait but. a minute. Where's the hard stuff from you? You're the one who's just throwing down these claims left and right. Hey, okay. hey, all, hey. All, it did, all it did was create another state. So instead I of there being down any 51 states, true. it's 52 states. The reason we don't count Washington, D.C. as a state now is because, if I recall correctly, it was um, its level of sovereignty was turned back into a municipality. But uh, I... And I could be wrong because I, I I haven't read the successive acts after that. I only really paid attention to the one that everybody likes to quote from the sovereign citizen movement. But all that did was create essentially another state in the union. They're That's just it. quoting John did. Birch Society stuff, dude. That's they're rehashing. But isn't that what you're essentially doing? Anyway, well, so we've gone most of way, what he said was true. The line. We've gone way off the line. Um, there was a line, I think. Sure, there's never a line. It's always, <laughs> there's no lines on the seeds of liberty. It's all gray areas. There's no lines on the well, seeds of yeah. liberty. Except, it's not, except it's for not the white powdery ones. ones. I mean, anyway. Um, so I guess it's not intellectual <laughs> dishonesty if you don't actually know better. No, well, it's not dishonesty because you can't be lying if you don't know that you're lying, right? Lying exactly, requires intent. Exactly. Good point. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, regardless of there was a line or not, I, I don't know how we got over here anyway. I don't remember how we went from all, all agreeing that the sovereign citizens were all in a horrible, were all in a bad path before, and then circling all the way back to Dave basically giving their exact justification, which I started off by saying was the one thing that linked all those groups together, that they all had the same understanding that they came to <laughs> of how things worked and why they worked the way they worked. Um, yeah. Anyway, anyway, so yeah, anyway, so yeah, so but so basically, the uh, to, to go back to the Korea thing, I guess, um, you know, the, the I think the the more, the more likely story, like I said, makes more sense that you know, good, good old Kim Jong Un <laughs> realized that a lot of things have been made public now. It's like, well, okay, now we definitely have to change our stance, and uh, you know, it may not have anything to do with Trump's blustering originally or whatever the heck they're throwing out there. Uh, I say just give him the Nobel Peace Prize. Fuck it. It's like a Cracker Jack box. I mean, it, it, re- anyway. it really doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. The, the fact that Obama go. got one for doing absolutely nothing it, yeah, but writing some joke. speech for for giving some speeches. And then as soon as he was uh, he got into office, you know, he became the the, the person who bombed the most. The Didn't next Hitler get it chief. In, until Trump got in. Um, no, Trump's no, on Hitler was on the cover of Time. Because Trump's. Time. The, yeah, that, yeah, that, that too. Um, but, but regardless, it's, you know, who cares? Um about the Nobel Peace Prize, as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> I, I don't really care. the the only The only issue I have with Trump getting the prize is is just the um, unsufferable nature of his uh, more extreme uh, fans. Uh, will become that much more unsufferable if he How wins. How dare that. you speak poorly of the God Emperor? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those type of people will will lord this over everybody else, and and, and that's the only thing. You know, we were talking before about stuff like political action and whether it's a good idea or not. And uh, no matter what what other things we talk about, I still come down to the fact that a lot of it still boils down to number one, you giving consent um, in some way, shape, or form, <laughs> and in the other sense, victories. Uh, however great and however however much relief they may provide, uh, you know whatever you could call a victory in the political sense, whether you get some uh, some BS law abolished, um, whether you get something legalized or not. Um, wh- I mean, if you get some taxes reduced, you know, great uh, in, in the short term. But unfortunately, the, uh, one of the big side effects that I always seem to see with these things is people that were somewhere close or somewhere close to or on the fence about finally giving up on government and finally realizing how much how there really is no difference between the two sides and it's just all BS uh, end up getting swept back into oh look the system actually does work and uh, you know we got some freedom and totally losing place of where they were in, in, in their apathy towards government 
<laughs> and uh, then you have to start all over with those people, and uh, it, 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 those type of things can end up backfiring. Or backfiring, I think. Uh, so I don't know. I still come down on that. Unfortunately, and as far as that goes, unfortunately. I think I think if you if you go down that road, you have to be very very clear that what you've accomplished is not sufficient. And I think you I think that has to be that point has to be repeated, made and repeated over yeah. and over again. Like yeah, this this was great that we got you know it's less restrictive slavery. It's still slavery and it's still shitty. It's nice that it's not nearly as bad as it was, but this is still pretty garbage. So let's not lose momentum here. Exactly. Eyes on the prize, people. Eyes on the prize. <laughs> Strike the root. Yeah. If yeah. And if you're gonna, if yeah, if you're gonna, if you're gonna go that, if you're gonna go that angle, that is something you, I think, you know, that's actually a good point. I think people should take that into consideration. That you really need to be gung ho. You can't just get a victory like that and stop. You, you know, like it, I mean, if I was in that position, I wouldn't even be giving myself a pat on the back for it. Been like, you know, I really wish we could have done more because this is not anywhere close to enough. Like, yeah, because it's yeah. I'm glad you know. I'm glad we got to you know. I'm glad we got this to happen. But this is nothing. We're so far from where we need to be. And just reinforce that over and over and over again. You know, yeah. obviously, give yourself a you know, give yourself a pat on the back for you know whatever you managed to do. But make sure that to everybody else watching and listening, and be ex- as clear as you possibly can about it. Like this was, this was. N- not even a step this was not even a step forward because we're still under the same shitty regime that we were under before they just abuse us a little bit less the regime is still shitty it's just the abuse happens less nothing has changed yes the the, the, <laughs> the beatings are the beating the beatings are less but morale has still hasn't improved um anyway yes, exactly that has to be the attitude well uh, yeah Next episode, I want to talk about how we get societies get the governments that you know they permit, and I think that's what we need to start focus on: is actual society. Well, that's a good idea. Well, uh, we'll see. Um, uh, actually, that, that's uh, we should probably get wrapping up. I just realized how uh, how long we've been going for, and uh, on that note about the the next show, yeah, we'll we'll see what goes on because the the one thing with my situation that we were discussing earlier is. Once I am living out of my car, uh, recording shows is going to be a little difficult. We're going to have to figure out how we're going to do that. Uh, we did discuss this earlier, a couple, you know, over the past couple of months. I know we brought it up a couple of times. That uh, that's why we were trying to build up a lot of shows uh, to have to have in the can. Uh, unfortunately, we're down to only one in the can right now. Maybe we'll try to get a couple more uh, in the can before I actually get kicked out of my. Well, not kicked out before I finally sell my house um, and. Uh, that way we'll uh, we'll be okay for a little while because uh, unless D- unless Dave ends up recording, I don't know. We're gonna have to figure out something because I'm still gonna be able to do shows, but it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier for me. We to We might do- have to move to live shows just to supplement, so we don't have to edit or anything. Well, yeah, because that's well, that's the thing. I mean, I was going to be uh, reinforcing the fact that any show, any shows that are recorded on my end, even like the so, like, I'll still be able to do solo stuff. So, like for my show um, and any other work I do, that uh, I just I'll just have to do it without a co-host or without a guest. Um, like that's fine, but it's nothing's going to be really edited in order for me to save uh, electricity. And in my situation, electricity equals uh, fuel because I'm going to be running off of my car. So whatchamacallit the um yeah that's not a uh that's it's not going to be as edited um but in order for us to uh, like i can still probably do shows uh as long as i can uh you know go pilfer some wi-fi at the public library or something i planned on doing that anyway because i know i know other people have done it i mean we've, we've had kyle turnblazer on the show before that's how he does his entire podcast you know he does it out of his big rig <laughs> driving yeah, around yeah and uh he finds, is a cool dude so uh i may uh i mean i may try to do that but if anything we anything we do like that unfortunately we're probably gonna end up having to use skype if i record more likely than not it's better off if i if we do a show like that that somebody else is recording <laughs> just in case so we're gonna have to figure that out so yeah show, shows may be uh sporadic until uh i sort my situation out but uh, hopefully not. But uh, just a fair warning uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks. 
but uh, we'll we'll do what we can. Maybe uh, if Dave can record, and even if they if if the guys have to do shows without me, we'll see if we can keep going for a while. <laughs> um, but hopefully, once uh, I, once I get things more sorted out, we'll we'll have a better plan, and uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll continue doing shows again. So just in case anybody. He- Thanks for pod fading. Although I will try to remember if we do, if we don't do a show, I will try to, and we end up have not having anything to put out that week. I will try to remember to do those little um, five, 10 minute um, filler things. Andre to stepped know. in to help us not pod fade. Then, then Shane did. I mean, we're, we're keeping this ball rolling boys thick and thin. We're going to get it done. Yes, we have hosts, but it's like, again, we're ha- it's a recording issue we're having right now and people who are set up yeah. to do that <laughs> and, and you could do that. That's a whole different ball game. Anyway, so once again, uh, like I said, we're going to keep trying to put stuff out. Uh, there'll, there'll definitely be stuff coming out on the channel um, or, uh, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to still be putting, trying to put a lot of stuff out, but it's going to be uh, a lot of my vlog series of uh, my, my, uh, my, my, my semi homelessness, homelessness uh, slash uh, quasi van nomadism. Jesus, I can speak tonight. So, yeah, that'll be fun. No, you can't. No, thanks, Andre. Anyway, so yeah, let's get, let's get closing out. Aside from your snide remarks, sir, do you have anything else to say in closing? <laughs> uh, no, I don't. Uh, peace on earth and goodwill to mankind. Also, looking at you, Estonia, better watch yourself. All right. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. Shane. Uh, yeah, I want to plug a couple of events that are coming up, actually. Um, by the time this uh, gets uh, posted... Uh, Derek Rose is going to be starting his Liberate Your Mind tour with the Conscious Resistance Network. And one of their stops on the tour is the other event, which is the Michigan or the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest, which is in uh, Delton, Michigan from June 21st to the 25th. And uh, they have a lot of uh, speakers lined up, uh, which includes uh, Scott Horton, Brent, Brett Vinwet, Vinwet. How do you say that? Vinat. Vinat. V- Brett Vinat. Uh, Louis uh, Mises. Luis Fernando Martin. Mises. Yep. Uh, CJ Kilmer, Shane Radliff, uh, Benny Wills, Nick Hazleton, and uh, Ali. Is that how you say it? Ole. Uh, Peter. Oh, yeah. Ole. I think it's Ole. Ole. Yeah. Yeah. Ole, Jim Coonigan, uh, Daniel Price, and more. Uh, so, yeah. Well, yes. The uh, the MPL Fest. We have discussed that on the show before. Uh Hope, I will hopefully be there. That's uh, the other part of my issue. You know, I was I was really hoping to be out of New York completely and moved in to a new state that would only be a four hour or so drive away from the MPL Fest rather than the 11 plus hour drive that I have to make from New York. Oof. But uh, it's looking like that's not going to happen now. But hopefully, hopefully, uh, I'll still be there. I mean, I plan on being there. I, I, I purchased the tickets for uh, the entire family. So hopefully we will be able to be there and join you, Shane, and other people that are uh, going. And if you haven't signed up yet, uh, unfortunately, yeah, actually, at the time of this recording, I think the early bird special is still open. But unfortunately, by the time this comes out, the early bird special will be over. Uh, but you can still get your tickets at mplfest.org. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, you should definitely consider checking us, uh, checking it out. If, uh, you got nothing to do during the last, uh, week, I guess it's the last week of June or last week ish of June 21st through the 25th. So good times, good times, good times. All right. Uh, Dave, anything else you got before we go? Uh, pfft. call your mom, tell your, tell her you love her if you haven't recently guys. And also, you no. know, by the time this thing comes out, uh, uh Either Syria, Iran, or Israel may not exist anymore. So, yeah. I don't think that's, that's possible, all I got to say. But that's a nice prediction. <laughs> all right. Well, all yeah, right. we'll see. So, thanks, guys. This has been the Seas of Liberty podcast. All of our information can be found at solpodcast.org. Uh, Patreon is still up and running, which, of course, just reminds me that I haven't put an episode out this week. I need to do that. Um, but for the most part, we're on track. And by the time you hear this one, we'll be, we'll be back on track again. There won't be an issue. Um, but yeah, please consider joining uh, our be, becoming a patron if you haven't already. Uh, but one, at, le- at least one bonus episode a week. And it is uh, for only a dollar a month. Uh, we don't ask for a lot. Uh, of course, there are there are other levels of, uh, of, of donation that you can get some extra perks if you want. Um, and, you know, So if you want to donate more than a dollar, you're more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, considering check it out and you get access to all the all those bonus episodes. And uh, you know, 
also help us out uh, you know help, help keep the lights on as we put as, as, as we say so all right once again thank you everybody for listening this has been the season of liberty and we'll catch you next time peace 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 easy peace This is Daryl W. Perry, host of Free Talk Live. This November, I'll be running in the world's biggest and most popular marathon, the New York City Marathon. And I've accepted a spot on Team Innocence Project because I'm a passionate supporter of their work. Since 1989, 353 people in the United States have been exonerated by DNA testing, including 38 who pled guilty to crimes they did not commit and 20 of whom served time on death row. The Innocence Project provided direct representation or critical assistance in 180 of these cases. With your help, the Innocence Project can help even more people who have been wrongly convicted. As part of Team Innocence Project, I am raising awareness about wrongful convictions and raising funds to help free the innocent. I've already paid the race registration fees. However, to secure my spot on Team Innocence Project in the New York City Marathon, I need to raise $3,500 by November 1st. You can support the Innocence Project and help me secure my race entry by going to run.freetalklive.com.